Welcome to Light Sweat and Metal, the special episode, download episode, where we have Peter Hobbs from Hobbs Angel of Death. But before we get into that, mm-hmm. we haven't been on YouTube for a while, Dave. Um, I think no, we haven't. <laughs> we haven't. And um, we've got to say is that we do have a YouTube channel, and I said on the other episode, if you listen to that, um, fans, we are doing mini episodes for our YouTube channel as well, where you just solely get the interview, but if you want to listen to the uncut version of the episode, that will be up on Podomatic and TuneIn and iTunes, but because this interview we've done with Peter Hobbs is over an hour and 20 minutes, you're going to get a full uncut version of that interview solely for YouTube, because one... It's an outstanding interview, and two, it just takes up too much time for our Podomatic um, bandwidth, which we have to expand to the max as it is. But we're going to translate some of those old episodes onto my new external hard drive so I can back them up and put them solely over to our YouTube channel, which I've got to update the YouTube because a lot of episodes that we have done over the months have not been transferred over, but we're going to do that as we finish this one and the weeks and months ahead. But anyway, we had Peter Hobbs from Hobbs Angel of Death that just recently came back from America with a tour and they touched down and they're back in the recording studio doing a new album. And not only that, they're going back overseas very shortly to do another tour over in um, in Japan and also or Southeast Asia and also they're going back for round two for the North American tour again and that but um now Peter Hobbs um, did mention in the interview that he likes to touch bases on some places that they haven't been able to go to yet mm-hmm. and in the interview, I did ask, and he knew I was going to ask it, when there's another Australian tour going around. You will hear that. He did say some special things about that. and Awesome. Will... Awesome. I can't wait to hear that, <laughs> what he says about that bit. Also, uh, they are thinking about going to Perth. Now, they have never played in Perth before. Now, Hobbs has never played in Perth before? Hmm. I, didn't, I didn't even knew that. I've had... I've had some of my friends have been in the band as well, like Mark Woolley and and um, Bo Remy all played in uh, in Hobbs Angel mm. as well. I first found out about the band through Mark Woolley. He was when he was in the band at the time when actually the the first album came out. Uh, so I remember we were working at VFL Park together, and he 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 goes, oh. Should have a listen to this band. He took me to his. He had a panel van at the time, and he played the the Hobbs Angel of Death album for me. And I thought, "Fuck, man!" So I'd been listening to Mortal Sin and all that stuff by then, and he played me the Hobbs Angel album, and it just blown away and loved it. That band since then, um, and f- didn't see him on that tour, unfortunately. But uh, it was when they did the. The album launch for the second album, Inheritance, at the when I, that I finally got to see Hobbs Angel of Death, mm. and of course I've seen them several times since then, and and saw them earlier in the year uh, with Bo when Bo was in the band, and so yeah, it was great, great band, and uh, great and Hobbs is a great songwriter too, yeah. great extreme but thrash yeah. sort yeah. of songwriter too, so. Also, yeah. I don't want to give out too much because there's a lot of things we've talked about in the interview, but a couple of things I want to say. 
We mentioned about Soundwave. Now, I said, would he ever like to play on Soundwave? Now, the question he asked me, he turned the, not the heels on me, he turned the question on to me. He said, mm. I only spend six months of the time, or half a year of time in Australia. He's got a British passport, he's got another passport, and he's, you know, he's a resident of Australia, if we know. He mm. asked me, because he spends so much time overseas, are they considered the international band? And I said, I still, I, to me, I still call, consider them an Australian band that I say, is in, tours I, internationally. I said to him, I consider Hobbs Angel of Death the same as ACDC. What did he say to that? So that's a great answer. Uh, because you just got to open a window a bit more. Yeah. There might yeah. be an Australian band, but they spend more time playing... Like I, I mean, I still kind of consider, even though they don't really live here anymore, but I still consider them an ACDC and Australian band. I always do. Because they, sta- they started here. Oh, I always do. And like yeah. Los Angeles, they started here. But yeah. at the same token, I still see ACDC as an international band from mm. Australia. Hmm. That's what I was trying to get. They're an international band from Australia. So, the question is, Dave, before we get into the answer of the interview, should Hobbs Angel of Death be approached by AJ to be on Soundwave? I know he wants to. Maybe that, mm. and we do speak about it in this interview. You have to listen to it. Yeah. But um, just your answer. Oh, uh, I'd love, love to see them on Soundwave. Yeah. <laughs> Love to see Hobbs and uh, they'd have probably have to put the album new album out first before it happens, because um, they haven't put out an album, uh, uh, proper city album in over twenty years, and so it'd have to be on the back of a new new set release. And I'll also mention about Tankard, where they played with Tankard, because Gary. We had an interview earlier this year when Tanko came over to Melbourne. It was actually with Tankard and um, I think Slayer were on the bill as well yeah. it's the Jalo, at the Jalo Metali Festival. Yeah, that, yeah. I know Bo, uh, my friend Bo, Bo was on that show, playing in the band at that stage as well. So yeah, we yeah, did Slayer speak about on the bill. that. Um, as you know, Peter Hobb is a massive Slayer fan. Yeah. And when they found out that they were actually pushed up the bill rather than down the bill. Even, yeah. Even more fanatic goosebumps. <laughs> also, yeah. one thing I, one more thing I can say about we did talk about what would be his bucket list, the band to play alongside with, and we did speak a couple of bands in this episode that he liked to play, and one of them, and I can say this, it's Exodus. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, to, uh, to Exodus, Hobbs Angel, Death Australian Tour, that, that'd that just be brutal. Yes. I'd love to see that happen. Yeah. And Absolutely. also, we did say about the Big Four, should they expand the Big Four into another Big Four? And, and he said, yeah, they should. And whatnot. But I'm not going to give it all away. I'm not going to give mm. it all away, Um, what's being said. It's an hour and 20 minutes. Mm. Why just... We just talk and talk and talk. He he thanks us, Dave. He he wants to come back on the show. When awesome. The album... We'll get him on when he get, when he when he puts the album out. Yeah, we'll get him back on the show to talk chat about the album. Let you in on a story. Yesterday he was putting together the album art cover work for the new album. Awesome. They got they has he got a label to put it out on yet? Don't know. No, oh, okay. Gonna ask. We can't really talk much about an album that hasn't been. No, uh, uh, yeah. But, but um, what I can say is, album probably be it was done. The album's been done overseas. Now, I th- yeah, I, th- I think, think it's been done for quite a long time, yeah. actually. Just I the do, I touch. do. Well, I won't. No, I, I better not say anything. I, I won't say anything on air. I'll, I'll tell you about it off here. Yeah. 
But um, we did get a little bit of answer of what it was back to getting out. You have to listen to the episode. Yep. And that. Mm-hmm. But also, there's songs that Peter Hobb mentioned that he wants us to play, and his choice. On our latest episode for Tune In and Podomatic, David had his songs that he's chosen because... What, what, what was Hobbsy's choice? Hobbsy's... I can't really remember. It, it was I was just so into the moment. He picked out a lot of songs. I was, I'll have okay. to play back a lot of songs. But um, we can put um, some other songs in too if we can, if YouTube allows us to. But um, I don't see that no, should be any we reason. Won't, we won't do that through YouTube. <laughs> no. But um, I want to say, the band's been around for years. They're one of the... Iconic yeah, they, band they, that came they, out of they basically basically started as kind of as another under the name of Tyrus and then it basically, basically when he wanted it's, I think he wanted to go overseas he changed the name to Angel of Death when he, he basically went overseas to shop the band around and he he did ask the um the Taurus guys to come along with him, but obviously they didn't. So he had to look up from new members. He did have, uh, in the early days, he had guys from Nothing Sacred, so that's where my friend Mark Woolley came in. He he came in and they had Phil, I think Phil Gresick, who was in Mass Confusion and um, Long Road Home, uh, Long Road Home or something like that. Um, he was playing bass. I know uh, another friend of mine, Darren McMaster Smith, actually recorded the drums on the um, debut album. Uh, uh, they had Sham. They've had. There's been a lot of guys through the band. That, uh, uh, Sham, who was in Nothing Sacred. Uh, Bo, my friend Bo, who was in Persecution at one stage, um, and British Steel, the Jim's Pro tribute band. Uh, God, um, no, yeah, that, that's just to name a few. Yeah. I mean, they've had a lot of different members. We did, Saundies. We did talk about that six-track EP that they did, which was a very low budget, very, I mean... Six-track it EP? Did, it, yeah, it, when they started the, the um... The band out. What the? Oh, fuck? the de- the demo tape. Yeah, yeah, the demo tape. The six track demo tape. Yeah, and also it was very low. Um, it was financial. It's not as expensive what it is nowadays. Um, yeah, and stuff. But we also talked about you know social media and how the music has changed. Uh, music business has changed. What he has seen over the years as well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and one of the questions is. Who thinks sometimes it's better off not being in a band now compared to what it was back then? So, mm. you're going to listen to a hundred and, an hour and 20 minutes, not a hundred, an hour <laughs> and 20 minutes of, well, we could have done an hour, a uh, hundred no, hours. 80, so, so, basically 80 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit of a, not an education lesson for me, because I don't, I've been listening to Hobbs Angel of Death as well. Haven't seen them live, because... They've been predominantly not only they've, have, been, they've been overseas for most yeah. of this year, yeah. basically. Um, but they had they a bit did, of a did, they, as did well. do, they had to look for basically new members uh, yeah. because I know Bo Bo left the band earlier in the year. Mm. I saw his last gig with them at um, a festival here in Melbourne, and then uh, for a stage there, they, he was using all European guys, and then um, on this US tour. Run. He did. Um, you know, had another uh, friend. Uh, he he had actually done gigs with Hobbs before. Homer uh, on guitar yeah. was there on guitar for the US run with Solstice, Solstice and all that. And, yeah. So. Well, I think I better stop bash my guns because you're going to hear me bash my <laughs> guns me for too. an hour and twenty minutes. But um, what an awesome special treat for you guys we've got Peter Hobbs now he just walked in the door when I rang him the first time and I said do you mind if we just I'll let you 
unwind and let you have a cup or whatever, and I'll ring you back in half an hour. He said, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Half an hour later, and boom, an hour and 20 minutes, you'll hear an episode interview with Peter Hobbs talking about the latest trip to America. Everything you need to know. If I have left some questions out, well, we're going to get them back on later next year. All right, when the new album comes out and they're talking about the new tour. If I have left any questions out, well, this is the whole process of this show that we do. We leave questions out, there's a next time we can fix on that question we didn't ask. But there's a lot of questions I did ask in this for everybody who just learned, heard the band way back to the start where they first started. And you're going to hear... Peter, thanking the fans. He can't, doesn't have enough paper to write down to say thanks to everybody. And that's from Peter to the fans, like us and everybody around the world, because without the fans, he wouldn't be where he is today. And he just loved doing it. And we cannot say thank you, Peter, for giving us his time. But also, David, he also says thank us for giving up our time for him to talk to us, you know. Oh, awesome! So uh, he's he's a good, great guy. I've talked, I've chatted briefly with him before. Yeah, at gigs and all that. He's he's a good good bloke. Yeah, he is. Mm. All right, sit back, relax, grab your cuppa, grab your whatever cordial here in Australia or Kool Aid. <laughs> leave the or, or LAIs. Or ginger beer. I'm, I'm being a frailly this week, and I'm drinking ginger ale, so it's good. But anyway, sit back, relax, enjoy, grab a chair, grab a, whatever you can sit on, and just listen to the great stories and answers of Peter Hobbs, because it's just absolutely fanatical. And we'll come back, wrap it up, and say our last goodbyes for this special and give you guys a bit of a taste of what you expect on the next episode. Here he is, Peter Hodd from Hob Hangs or Death. Cheers. Well, guys, this is Jamie from Blood, Sweat and Metal. David, my other co-host, can't be with us. Unfortunately, he's got some commitment. But I'm here, as always, doing interviews for our show. And this time, we are speaking to probably one of those Greatest legends of Australian metal from Melbourne called Hobbs Angels of Death. And I'm speaking to Peter Hobbs. Great to see you back down in Australia after a good tour over in America, Pete. Thanks very much for having us on the show, bro. Yeah. And I've got to say, um, let's share some stories about that American tour. I know that you were over there for a few months and you just got back just recently. I, I got, got down with the flu when we were supposed to um, do the interview, but we put it back due to your jet lag and me having the flu. But let's talk about the American tour. How was that? And how was the stories over there and seeing the people just coming out and drive, seeing you guys play? Uh, To be honest, it was totally overwhelming. Um, You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a pretty hard hitter and a, Smally sort of do, but uh, these guys had bloody tears rolling down my face. You know, yeah. the, the, it was oh, it was just so overwhelming. Um, the comments, the the words, the the high respect that um, USA has for Hobbs, which just absolutely blew me away. You know, I mean, um, the, my um, my answer to um, a lot of my fans and whatever, and, and being Europe also as well is my gratitude. I mean, look, there isn't enough paper and enough ink in the world to say fucking thanks. You know what I mean? (laughs) I put up on my status on my own personal Facebook page, should bands um, be allowed to sing with a teleprompt? I mean, I know some bands and some legend bands like Ozzy Osbourne, who can hardly speak, but yet he can sing crystal clear due to a couple of technologies things that came out like auto-tune, but to having a song on a piece of paper 
like you were saying. Um, mm. Did that revolve around due to being in the moment and you can lose a crack of a word here and there? Or is just the way that some fans just go for it due to whatever reason it may be? Well, I'm, I'm not 100% actually sure. What a question. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, look, I tell you what, if when you no. get older, sometimes you can't remember a lot of things. And yeah. um, look, at, look, I, I guess it, mate, I, Ozzy Osbourne is a legend, always will be. And um, no, I, to me, I wouldn't care if fucking Ozzy Osbourne was writing a telephone book. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, a, a guy who's been around for that long, been there, done everything. Fuck, I know. I mean, you, you'd, you'd have to give the guy a grace no matter what he was doing, you know? Yeah. Um, I I've, got, I've, got no, uh, I've got no qualm with that. I mean, look, at the end of the day, look, um, like I said, we, we all get older and we, and we do forget things. And, and I think that somebody that actually is doing that is just trying to um, give the crowd uh, what they've come to see and what they've paid for, you know? So... I, well, I think it's totally fine, and I wouldn't really kill anybody for doing that. <laughs> no, the reason why I'm saying that, I've been, um, I'm not blasted by the least thing. I think we're having a, an inside joke. If we forget the words, or the crowd forget the words, the yep. band start to forget the words. So I get blamed sometimes for getting the words mixed up myself as well, but... Yeah, all for it. If they want to use teleprompt, use teleprompt. But hey, it's there, it's there. But let's go no, back to um. Yeah. I just, I just, I just go back to that. It's actually quite amazing because quite a few times I, I put the verses in the wrong places. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, gonna... yeah, you know, well, sometimes it just comes out the way it does, and you put the second verse in the front verse. And you're looking at people, and, you know, I don't like to interact with the crowd. And there's, um, like, new songs, you're not totally used to it. And you, and, you see, and these people singing the words for you, and you're thinking, how easy is this? I don't have to make them up as I go along and a copy of you guys, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys went around for, for a while. You got your runs on the board, and you also got a lot of predonition over the years. But I just want to ask, what have you seen has changed since you started back in the 80s compared to now in the music side of things, especially the business? Um, look, I, I, say this, I say this in a joking manner, yep. but uh, sometimes I think it's probably more cooler not to be in a band. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody, everybody that I speak to and everybody I know is, is, all, is all either in one or wanting to be in I to be in one, and um, you know, like to, to me, honestly, um, I think that an, an audience has dropped in numbers immensely due to a lot of the audience. Everybody's in a band and they're sitting there or standing there looking at you to find out what fucking mistake you're going to make at one minute thirty into the song. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, look, that's there you, go. That's, you know, like. That's a fact, but, um, you know, look, I mean, that's how it is. But, you know, when you step out of your own territory and you step into you know, new parts of the world, of course the audience changes. And, um, you know, like it, it really makes you it makes you feel like that you wanted and, and, and you know that, you know, like you've got respect and you've gained respect again after all the years. And, and it's a pleasure to do so, you know. But... Um, yeah. Yeah, look, it has changed. The, the, the industry has, has changed immensely, you know. Um, you know, everybody used to bag um, drama from Metallica trying to stop downloads many, many years ago. But, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, he was right. You know, I mean, we're striving out there. We uh, There's not many record companies now that are out there that are giving you... Um, uh, advances to be doing the job, so we're all doing this uh, self finance, and I mean we're putting in the time, we're spending money on um, doing all this, the products, the recordings, the artwork, the printing, the distributing all ourselves, and you know you just need one CD out there on the market, somebody copies it, 
it's all over YouTube. What was the fucking point, you know? Exactly. But, um, and the hard, the hard copy is what the real fans want. And if you've got a good product and and the cover looks good, well, and they believe in you and, and they respect and support you, they're going to buy the hard copy anyway, you know? Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why we've done this show. Not only are we fans of the metal world and the bands, we go out there, we buy the CDs or the hard copies and finals as well because yep. that's, making a com- that's making a comeback now. And it just gives the fans some of the new music a listen as well because we play out um, songs on our show to promote the bands as well. But you're right. When social media or especially the internet started to make a boom, these record companies knew about these pirating was going to happen, but they never yeah. did they never did absolutely nothing about it. They just turned a blind eye, and then Lars Ulrich from Metallica came out and said, "No, screw you! Why should we fork out thousands of dollars to make an album and give it away for free?" And early this year, you two just flooded everybody with the Apple iTunes or whatnot with the free yeah. album that we didn't even ask for. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. And, you know, like this, right. and it's sort of like the bands are, you know, like are not established, and and um, look, I really have concerns for the for the new younger bands and the younger generation that is that is trying so hard, and it's sort of like, you know, same sort of deal, you know, like they're bowling their head against a brick wall before you even start, you know. So I take my hat off to a lot of these younger dudes that are doing it all self financed and um, and not relying on somebody else to tell everything to them on a silver platter. So I've got a, I've got a lot of respect for the younger generation that's out there trying. Yeah. And also the old, you know. Exactly, and what also makes it harder is a lot of these live vendors are closing down or they've got restrictions and they can't get their music heard live and that's why we've got festivals going on all around the world not just here in australia but all around the world festivals another way to get the music out there i mean you guys played on a festival as well early in your career i played um i played on quite a lot of festivals in the last four years you know i've been at it um, i've been at it for the last four years pushing hogs like no tomorrow um I've, i've hit every avenue Oh, that's, I absolutely oversight Europe. But um, the amazing thing is uh, Killing for Christmas. And then I went back and did the summer tour, played with Venom and um, in Italy. And, you know, I've got great friends over in Europe. And uh, half my lineup is, is European, you know. So when I go to Europe, uh, European lineup is there. Um, you know, so I've got sort of bases pretty well covered. Um, as for you're talking about the festivals, yeah, look, there's great festivals out there as well. Yep. Uh, and there's more and more bands trying to get on them. And some of them are booked up two years in advance. You know, it's, exactly. yeah, it's not easy, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. So I take my hat off to anybody that's out there trying as well. It's, it's very competitive, uh, competitive today. Yep. Um, you know, it's, um, Oh, look, there's some great bands out there, and I, and I, I don't understand why they don't get the recognition. Uh, maybe they need to to work at it a little bit different or, or work harder, I don't know. But I've seen some amazing talent from Australia. I've seen some amazing talent in Europe and America. Everywhere I go, I see it, you know. I, I have good band supporters. And, um, you know, look, these guys are, are out there. I mean, they're ready for war. You know? They are. And we also have been criticised with the fans that we talk to on our show, especially here in Australia. Some of the fans of our show, I don't know if they're really fans of our show, but they say, oh, you're talking about some of the Australian metal, their shit. And I'm saying, what are you freaking listening to? Really? I mean, I, I'm, I'm like you, Pete. I've seen bands from America and a lot this year from Europe that's been to Australia. Um, yeah. with bands like a 
Concept and Tank Hard and Death, Death Angel and Creator. I've seen, yep. I've seen them came to Australia this year. But the problem yeah. here in Adelaide compared to what's happening in Melbourne is around that time when Death Angel Creator came to Adelaide, it was around the Easter period, and we only had like three to 400 people in the crowd. Mm. And compared compared to Melbourne, where it was packed out to the rafters. But is it because they're picking and choosing? Is it the economy because they can't spend enough money on a ticket? Or, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what the problem is. I, I, I really think it's laziness to ask for these bands to come to Australia. When they come, they don't pay on a ticket, and they're, they're the first people to complain that they don't get the bands that they want. But, I don't know. I mean, my, my tour around America that I've just come back from, I was either Shadow and Judas Priest. They were playing either the night before me or the night after. But I still had the diehards that came to the shows. Um, and then we uh, had a gig at, um, forgive me because I can't remember where it was, but uh, Creator and Arch Enemy were playing on the same night, you know? Yeah. And... Um, it wasn't very far away, you know what I mean. And yeah. uh, look, you get you get bands like Creator coming to America, and, and it's just unfortunate that you know nobody nobody starts off to plan um, and dump a dump another tour or another band on the night you're playing. Shit happens, you know. Mm. And that and that happened here in Australia many many years ago, especially in the nineties. The crowd was starting to be split up. Uh, yep. In the 80s, I found it was very different that if somebody was having a show or whatever, the, the, the next guy would turn around and go, okay, well, you get the cream on this week and I'll get it on next week. And, yep. you know, like, there was less promoters. I think the game was more playable um, because, it, look, at the end of the day, look, the world is dog-eat-dog. Dog. But, yep. I mean, I, I think uh, promoters lost a lot of respect for actually to play the game, well, fairly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because instead of having, uh, losing half of the crowd, well, why not wait till the next week and take it all? Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it, it's pretty easy, pretty easy sort of game, but look, unfortunately, sometimes things happen where shows do end up on the same night, and look, that's just tough. And the people that support you, they'll be at yours, and if they're not, well, so be it. And the ones that want to go and can't make up their mind, well, they miss out, you know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but, that's um, what I said. But, but I am like you. I, I don't understand sometimes because, um, look, I never say a band is shit. I never have because there's always uh, room and every opportunity to a band, for a band to improve. So I've never run around saying a band, a band is fucking crap or shit or whatever. Um, I always look at a band and think, uh, okay, there's ways for this unit to improve, and I'm sure they will. If they don't, well, they don't. And it all falls to wheels fall off, you know. But um, yeah. yeah, but but I'm definitely agreeing with you, bro. Because sometimes I don't understand either. You know, I've, I've heard of some when we're on tour. There were some great gigs, but I mean, I couldn't make it because I was playing myself. And there was even small numbers where they were too. You know, it's, a lot of people think that the other side of the world is is, is going to have so many more numbers than what we have here. But at the, the, the end of the day, it look, it, it's pretty much the same. It is. It is. You know, it's, it's like, um, you know, even some shows that we did in uh, Germany uh, through summer, um, you know, like we played in uh, in Berlin, and we played there before, and the, and the joint was chock a block. And then we played another night through the week, uh, through the week, and, and there was hardly anybody there. You know, I mean, still a good number, but yeah. I mean, vicious uh, rumours played there, and you're lucky if there was ten people. Yeah. You know, so it's a bit of a hit and miss. One day it can be chockers, the next day she can be empty. I, I think it. Depends on the weather. Like you say, it depends on the weather, the economy. People don't have as much money to throw around as what they did have. You know? Exactly. And you're right. 
we got the same numbers here in overseas, and a lot of people say to us on our show from the fans, oh, maybe that band don't have enough um, recognition down here in Australia, what they do over in America or over in Europe. I said, that's bullshit. If you want to buy the album, you'll buy the album. It's sitting there yeah. on the shelf. It's there on their website. If you want to buy it, it's there. There's no excuse. I, yeah. I say it's no excuse. I say it's no excuse. But I think what most of these people in Australia, especially what I know and speak them to in the fan type of thing, they just want to fixate on the golden era. They don't want to look at the new bands. They don't want to touch it with the temple bar pole. Me, on the other mm. hand, the last five years, my ears have opened up to all these new music. <laughs> And I love it. I really do yeah. love the new music. And, okay, you're not going to change the golden era of the 80s or the 70s. That will never vanish. But I can I can see a new wave of, and I have. The last 12 months, I have seen a whole new wave of bands coming through, not just here in Australia, but overseas as well, just to get the name out there and get a bit of, I don't know, a platform type of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got, I got back and over the last um, over the last probably year or so, I've, I've seen great bands touring. Uh, look, they all give me their uh, CDs after I tour. I come home, I, I put them on, I listen to them. Some grab me, some don't. You know, um, some it's like I've heard it all before. But I mean, my new album, people are going to turn around and go, we've heard it all before. But I mean, at the end of the day, my main object, my main object, and my main thing was to do on the new album was yes, you're hearing once yeah. again, 25 years later. That's what it's all about, you know. It's a lot of bands um, come out and try and do um, something completely new, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's just backwards, fucking opposite. Don't work, you know. So. What I've tried to do on my new album is um, cater for a lot of the music industry of today. Um, you know, like there's a lot of stuff, there's quite a few songs off on the new album that, that I wrote many, many years ago. I've refabbed them and, and made them colouring of what they are today for 2014, you know. Yeah. You, can't, you can't please everybody. And my, my aim is not to please everybody. My aim is to please who wants to be pleased, you know? That's right. As long as you're pleasing yourself, that's the main thing. That's, that's what I look at it. Well, that's Please the way yourself. it is. Yeah, and the new album is, is come from my heart. It's, yeah. it's, it's come from my soul and my heart, what, what, what I'm doing, you know? And, um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I'm very proud of it. And I wish I was going to be around another 25 years and to see it become cult like the first one, you know. Yeah. That's, that's in mind sight, you know. Like, you've got to have a little bit of egotistic somewhere, but, you know. <laughs> um, look, I'm, I'm very proud of it. And, and the Italians, um, the Italians, uh, Alessio Medici done a great job on the bass. Iago yeah. Bricci on drums, fantastic job. Great young guy. He, he's going he's gonna to go somewhere in life. For sure, yep. and Simon Weizen from um, Die Hard and Valkyria from Sweden. You know they, they've all done a great job, and I just can't wait for the world to hear it next year. When are we roughly about to hear the new album? Because I believe you're going back overseas to Japan and and round two through the United States, and also you're in a plan for going to New Zealand as well. So when roughly will we get the new album? Roughly. I've got to stop touring. <laughs> no. no, no, I'm um, look, I'm a hard worker. I, I work 24, 24 hours a day. You know, yeah. I'm wicked, and there's no rest for the wicked. I enjoy what yeah. I do. Um, you know, I, I'm, if anybody asks me anything, I'm the first to put my hand up and say, "Yeah, I'll be there," and then think about consequences later. Uh, you know, I, I jump in head first. I ain't scared of deep water. Um, I actually learned to breathe through my ears if I do get in the deep water. So, um, you know, like, you know, I try hard. So, look, I, I always make time for um, my fans, my family, and, um, 
look, I, I plan to get this thing out next year for sure. It, it, it's going to be. I'm working on the cover this weekend. Um, going to see a good friend that helps me out with all my artwork, uh, Scotty McMahon down in uh, Ballarat. And uh, he helps me with all my artwork and all my direction of which I want to go. You know, very switched on, hands-on guy. And uh, we work together, and, and 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 things really work out fine. It's merchandise, um, you know, posters, photos. Uh, we've got it all under control, and, and I really enjoy working with him. So that's my plan for this weekend, bro. Working on the cover. Wait, are you using the same um, artist? That's the previous album, or it's a total new guy? Um, no, front cover is uh, like I've said on uh, Scotty. Me and Scotty Macker have uh, come up with some really great, uh, you know, great stuff, and um, we're going to work together and uh, do what we're going to do. Uh, I'll leave that in front cover for a bit of a surprise, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, please do. But he, I, I, I like mean, to ask, he, I like yeah. to ask. I like to ask. Would you consider doing a box set later down the track with all your albums? Well, there'd, there'd only be one, one album, two or three albums. There'd only be three albums. Inheritance, a lot of people have asked me to re-release. Um, you know, it, it's crossed my mind over many, many years to to re-record it. I could have, I could have done it, you know, this year, in, um, summer. But you know, look, that was a personal album, the personal album that I did in '94, and um, it's been asleep for a long time. Look, the production. Production really, um, really let it down. It has some good songs. It has some really boring ones too, you know. Um, but it's what I did. It's what I was doing back there. A lot of people jump for it, you know. Like I, I turn up overseas, and, and there's many, you know, asking me, "Oh, have you got inheritance? I'll pay a thousand bucks for a copy." And you know, I mean, this really makes you proud, and, and you feel very honoured about all this sort of stuff. But well, down the track, mate, maybe I might, you know, remaster it, take a few songs off that I don't like, and, you know, that might come back out. So you've got the people that are out there listening or whatever, you know, like it, it hasn't totally closed in my mind, but look, I'm not making 100% promises, but maybe you might see inheritance in the near future. Yeah, I mean, whatever happens, happens, but... Are there any plans of doing an Australian tour after you come back from overseas next year? Geez, I'll tell you what, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> because well, actually there's, there is... I know, um, I know that you haven't been to Adelaide for a while in Perth, but I, I'd just like to ask from the fans' point of view. Okay. Um, without saying too much, because I never kiss and tell, there are plans <laughs> of me going... Um, there are plans of me heading up to Sydney before I go to Japan in February. Uh, there is there is a, a rumour kicking around that I was playing in Melbourne uh, with the lineup that is going to Japan with me. Um, also a rumour that uh, Hobbs is meant to be going to uh, Brisbane, also Adelaide. Wait. So, um, you know, Perth. I've, I've never played in Perth. Um, I've wanted to. You know, I, I guess I need to speak to a promoter and they can work something out and, you know, every, everybody can win and, and, and get an ice cream out of it. Well, for sure, I'll be there, you know. I'm not greedy. I won't ask thousands or millions, you know. <laughs> it, you know it's just got to be fair for everybody all around, you know. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, look, at the end of the day, you know, everybody wants to everybody wants to buy an ice cream, but... Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, look, I, I, I don't mind throwing, throwing in a few bucks to, to have some fun myself, and, and it's like going to a casino, you know. Yeah. You don't get in there for free. You got to pay, and you fucking lose. <laughs> you know. So, but it's all about having fun, you know. It is. It is. It is. And what makes me so fanatical as a fan for your band? That microphone stand that you use. That is just phenomenal. I know a band or a cover band here in Adelaide called. I've just got to get my my brain right because they played in Melbourne with um, another cover band. They played metal and they just put skulls on their 
microphone stand. I, I can't remember the yeah. name, but your um, microphone stand is just phenomenal. Because when I first saw all that and then moved over to Adelaide from Sydney back in 2005 and saw this tribute band, I'm saying, this whole thing is on death. That bloody microphone stand remembers the Hobbs Angel of Death. And that's the first thing I always... When someone talk about Hobbs Angel of Death, it's a microphone stand. That's the first thing. It's a microphone yeah. stand. Because yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's something, you know, like, look, I, I've, I've been into the dark side for many... Look, I was born into the dark side. So yeah. I was born into the world as that. And uh, if you follow, actually, my name back to the very, very beginning... It's uh, it's another name of the devil. So, <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, look, I've always been into it. Um, a, a lot of people, you know, running around with inverted crosses hanging around the neck. I mean, I've been doing this for... I've been wearing mine for nearly 53 years. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I didn't start I didn't start this imagery thing. It was uh, something I was born into. And um, it's the, the family that I come from is that. Uh, look, a lot of people have been offended by it over the years, but once you get to know me and who I am and, and what I'm all about, I mean, um, it doesn't no matter. I mean, you could be running around with um, fucking something, uh, the one up the right way, but I mean, you could be an arsehole still at the same time. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it, it doesn't really matter. But you know, that, um, that thing really is a, uh, is a great a great stage presence thing to have on stage. Every time I set it up and I go walk away to grab my axe, I come back and there's about 3 million people trying to take pictures of it. Yeah. I've had a lot of people trying to steal it. Yeah. And, you know, I've had it for a long time. Um, chilling for Christmas, it actually got broken about 20 times. And uh, we, had, we had to keep gluing it back together and getting it back for every night on stage. And, um, yeah, no, look, it's been with me for a very... Well, it's been with me for over 20 years. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, when it's used and, you know, like the 80s, very rarely. But, um, you know, like everywhere I travel now around the world, it always goes with me. It's become a part of me. Um, some of a bit of America, I didn't have it, so I had to grab another one, but it wasn't the same. And I felt very empty and lost, you know. But, you know, I'm, I'm back home and I've got it again and, you know, and it, and it's all cool. You know, it, it's just something, just something in your life. You know, it's it's like you imagine uh, having something hanging off your ear for twenty years, and you take it off, and you think, "Fuck, something's missing." You know. Yeah, that's like the you know, so I've got. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it, and it, it's yeah. just a part of me, and and a lot of people know me as that as well. Uh, yeah. It looks it looks great in pictures, and like you say, as, as soon as a, a picture comes up. And that uh, inverted cross is hanging on the mic, you know. Everybody goes, fuck, that's off, you know. So it's really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it, you know. I think my co-host will want me to ask this because he's not here. How was it like touring with Tankard? Because we spoke to the lead singer earlier this year when they came to Melbourne and they really highly regard you guys for playing with them and they still do. The first band that comes to their mind is ACDC, and Hobbs Angel of Death. Look, uh, I've known those guys for many, many years. They're, um, Harris Jones does all their albums. Uh, they're awesome guys. Look, I, I've known them for, for a very, very long time, and wherever I'm playing or they're playing, we always uh, bump into each other and we have a beer and have a good laugh. Um, and, and what's his name? The singer, I can't remember what's his name. Refresh my right. memory. Jerry. Man, Jerry. the guy the guy nearly killed me in Finland. We went out on the piss, and I don't know what the fuck happened, but I don't know. But I saw him again early in the morning, and, and then I just sort of like disappeared again. But we, we had an absolute ball, and uh, it was a great time in Finland. And uh, yeah, look, they're an awesome band as well, and right, they know how to rip it up too, you know. And, and great guys, really cool people. Yeah, so well, I think got, that was the. Ho- I think that was the highlight for us this year when we asked for an interview. We hooked it up, and when I came over to Melbourne, Jerry, or the lead singer, yeah. said, where's the nearest 
where's the nearest pub? I want to go somewhere quieter. And I looked at David, he's from Melbourne. I said, mate, where's the nearest pub? I don't know. And we're on Swanson Street, mind you. Yeah. And we walking down Swanson Street, straight in the bar, and he just flipped his money out and said, buy us all a drink. I'm going, man, this is an interview. <laughs> this is an interview. And, yeah, he, he can drink. Oh, man, he can drink. But he didn't drink um much, he didn't drink much during the interview, he drank afterwards. But um I've got to say a top bloke. But I know there's been highlights throughout your career with since you started and also going to America just recently. But what is some of the stories that you can talk about that's been highlights for you? I mean I've got all night, but I know you don't. <laughs> Mate, I've got all night for you as well. <laughs> um <laughs> look, uh, one of my one of my most exciting times of all was um, Joe, Joe, Joe Napoli in Finland actually did something for me that my own country has never been able to do. And uh, he actually sent me an email and said to me, Pete, do you want to play on uh, 2013's Fest in uh, Ulu? And I said, oh, yeah, that'll be really cool. And um, I said, yeah, cool, yeah, drop me down because I'm going to be in Europe, so I'd love to come there. Anyway, two days later, I see Tank Card go up on the floor as well. I'm thinking, oh, awesome. I'm going to be catching up with a lot of great friends again, you know. And then all of a sudden, I get this email, and he goes, I've got a surprise for you. And I said, I think I know what you're going to tell me. And um, he goes, yeah, and this time, nobody can buy you off the bill. He said, you're playing with Slayer. And I said, you're kidding. And he goes, no, I'm serious. I said, oh, this is fucking awesome, bro. This, this is what I've been waiting for, you know, 32 years. And um, all the bands just kept adding to this and adding to it and adding to it. And um, and it was great. Holly Moses was there. Blasphemy was there. Um, Orange Goblin. Mate, there's so many, you know. Like I, I, I hate to mention names because I feel I yeah. feel guilty. I feel guilty when I leave somebody's name off, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. mate, this, this two day festival was absolutely awesome, and I knew my time slot was in the afternoon. And then he sent me an email. Should I change the time slot? He said I'm putting you on at nine thirty, and I'm thinking, yeah, nine thirty to ten thirty. I said it finishes at eleven thirty. And I said, I said, you sure you got the time? It seems right. He actually made Hobbs and Slayer cross in the corridor. <laughs> and that was cool. You know, so, and that'd be my idol for many, many years. And, um, you know, like we got to meet him and whatever. Another highlight for me is I'm um, playing with Venom at Faust Fest, uh, just there in August. Um, and, and over this last, you know, three years, I've played with some absolutely killer bands in Europe, um, America, just recently. Man, you know, here's, here's some I don't want to forget. Blood Feast. Blood Feast is a great band that I love and always have. Uh, and most importantly, um, Ed Fastley from uh, Wendigo Productions, he was the one that made America all happen for me. So uh, very, very grateful to Ed. And I uh, can't wait to see him next year. <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. You know, I hope, like, player, I hope player comes to Australia next year. I know there's a new album coming out next year sometime. So hopefully, the next summer after that, hopefully they'll hit Australia. Hopefully. Well, many many years ago in the eighties, there was a um, a video out called Combat Tour. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think it was about eighty four, somewhere around that. I I could have the dates mixed up, but. Anyway, it was uh, at Studio 54, and there was Venom, Slayer, and Exodus. And the crazy thing is, is I've played with Slayer, I've played with Venom, and there's one band, Exodus, that I want to play with as well. And yeah. the week before I left, Exodus were playing, and if I was there for that extra week, I would have been on that bill. But, you know, it's going to happen again on your... Um, I'm sure we'll cross paths, and you know it's a band that I want to play with, Exodus, and, and I've done my little studio 666, you know. Yeah. 
you mentioned but, Exodus. You mentioned Exodus. Do you? What memories do you have of Exodus growing up? Do you, are you a Rob Duke fan, which was just the last decade, or are you going right back to where they first started, with now they got Destro back in the band? Um, look, I'm I'm back there at the beginning with Bonded by Blood, um, two album. I mean, it, it's one of the ultimate of its times, you know. Um, Rain and Blood, Bonded by uh, Bonded by Blood. Um, Bonded by Blood. <laughs> uh, you know, like there's just so many more albums that um, yeah. no Exodus have always been really cool, you know. I mean, I would like to see a big four, a new big four of thrash metal come out, like Slayer, or well, Slayer was on the last big four, but a new big four um, with Exodus, probably Overkill, probably Testament, and probably one more. I mean, should there be a Venom. new big four? <laughs> yeah, Venom, yeah. Should there be another big four? <laughs> um, look, I, 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 think, I think there could be many big fours you know, like I've said, the industry has some awesome talent. Um, you know, the big four, Anthrax, Megadeth, Slayer and, uh, and Exodus. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm sort of what I, I... Normally, I'm pretty, you know, pretty confident with coming out every sort of single word in the head. But... Um, <laughs> Trying to trying to get a, a big four again now and reconstructing that, man, I reckon they they should have the big one hundred, you know, and yeah. give everybody a chance because, look, you know, like I've got ears, man. I, I travel around the world and, like I said, I love slow, and I, I've had the most awesome comments just coming back from America. Is Hobbs is what Slayer has been looking for for the last fifteen years. You know, like, we absolutely fucking blew America apart. And um, the, the words, you know, like, people, you know, approaching me and telling me that, um, you know, like, we know you're a huge Slayer fan, but you're actually fucking better. And, yeah. but, but for me, I've, I've got to thank the team that, that plays with me. I've got to thank my lineup because it's not only me. I can't do it on my own. Exactly. And um, exactly. All, all these guys put in, put in their time. Um, but the you know the guys that were with me on this trip, uh, Oma, Alicio, and Iago, mate, they're, they're fucking gladiators. You know, like it's not easy. Six no. weeks on the road, fucking belting heads in the same van, arguing, blowing, farting. You know what I mean? It's, it's just it's, it's true. You know, oh, who found them? Well, not me. Well, it must have been you because I know it wasn't me. I mean, come on. We've been in the van now. It's time to line up. We are brothers. You know what I mean? But, that's, um, like this, that's like travelling across Australia on the Nullarbor. You see a dead kangaroo next when someone drops their guts and it's like, fucking hell. Where did that come from? <laughs> you know, it's just, um, no, look, uh, touring isn't easy, bro. And, and look, you bump heads and everybody has their ways. You know, like I like to have my, my space at times and everybody everybody does too, but... I mean, you're locked up in a van nearly 24 hours a day. You know, you're probably out doing your shows and whatever that probably lasts about four hours. And you're jumping back in the van, you're going to the next state, you know. And, like, we, we travelled about 15,000 miles throughout throughout the states. Yeah. And, um, and I've been following... I've been, I've been... Sorry for cutting you off. I've, I've been following your trip in America just recently. How... You go from Chicago one night and you're traveling 1,100 miles the next night to the next gig. Yeah, you know, and we get out of the van and um, check out where we're doing. We don't even worry about sound checks. We just, uh, our time comes, plug in, bam, go, destroy. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Love you to death and see you next time. And then we're off to, to do the same thing every night, you know. There wasn't um, there wasn't one night that I backed off. It was full on aggression. Um, every single show, there just wasn't one. Even even if there were small numbers, to me it doesn't matter whether there's sixty, six hundred, six thousand, six hundred thousand, or six. 
it really doesn't matter to me. I, I give people what they've come to see and, and give them what they've paid for, you know? Well, that's the thing. So, I, um, I, I, like, I like the band just giving, don't give us stuff about the politics. They can work it out on its own accord, but with bands like yourself and a few others around Australia who just go out there, give it all, no matter how much you pay, you know you're going to walk out with, a, with your ears bleeding, wanting more. I know that. Yeah. I mean, I've been to so many gigs this year. It's unbelievable. My partner's saying, Jamie, I think you need to slow down. No, I'm like the energizer bunny that wants to go to the next gig that's on the bill. I had, um, again, talking about America, because, you know, like I'm still buzzing. And um, <clears throat> look, the, uh, the comments and the gratitude from people saying, you know, like uh, Hobbs is, is well over playing in these places, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and they had so much respect and so much admiration that I was playing in some of the dingiest places ever. But I mean, that's the underground and that's where I come from. And, yeah. and, and I have no... Um, like I'm not stuck up, I'm, I'm not egotistic or whatever. Man, I'll, I'll go and fucking play and shit if I have to, because that's the way it is, you know. Yep. I don't want to get my hands dirty. I don't want to get me, you know, fucking shit on me boots or whatever, because, I mean, look, it washes off. But at the end of the day, I mean, um, you know, it's like that, that Rolling Stones album uh, got that uh, song. Um, Sweet for dinner, I think it is. Come on, come on down. Got to scrape the shit right off your shoes. You know, I, I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, and, and I love that. And and to be in a in a venue where everybody is in the same mood, everybody's just so hyped up about us. You know, being there and fucking scumbag places. It was great because that's where I come from, and and that's what it's all about. You know. So for me, you know, I don't need to play in fucking five-star venues or whatever. I'm happy to play in fucking half-star because you have so much fun as well, you know? Yeah, I used to be, well, I used to be a drummer back in the early yeah. 2000s before my bandmate decided to go on the band and hock everything in, in the pawn yeah. shop. There. I'm talking about the drum kit, everything. And um, we used to start jamming in a garage and I remember ABC Radio. I don't know how mm. they came about. Wanted us to play, and two days before we had to go to ABC, all the stuff was stopped, like not stolen, but pawned in. He went on a bendo, got got drunk and whatnot, and sold everything. But I know what it's like for bands to play in the most scrubbiest places. I mean, I remember one place I played out in 2000, and it looked like a rehab. Mm. There was dead bodies everywhere, and I remember playing there, and I'm going, now, do we play here, or do we play next door? Because it doesn't look the same. But Actually, I understand. It's, it's, yep. it's funny that you say that, because the very last gig that I did in Seattle yep. was in a fucking abandoned nut house. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, and I, that was cool. I, yeah. And... It was just eye-opening back in 2000. And now this place I played it was just down the road from King's Cross. Yeah. And we know what that place was like, but it's an eye-opener. I couldn't care yeah. less if you put 20 people in the front of me, five people, or a 1,000 people. I mean, I didn't make much money that night, but it wasn't about the money. I had blisters on me freaking hands because I was a drummer, and I had to play another three gigs the next day. Because we only had like half an hour sets and stuff like that. But that place, that looked like a rehab. And you had vomit on the floor. You had alcohol. You had everything. It was a, one of the most scrubbiest places I ever remember in my life. Mm -hmm. It opened my eyes up. And it doesn't matter where these bands play from. I mean, I'm I'm a street kid from way back. I'm street wise. Mm -hmm. I, I, live in the, I live in the gutter sometimes. But mm -hmm. that's where the music brought... To me, it was, it was from the street. It was from the, 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 not the gangs or anything, but just the street mm -hmm. kids, the hard life, the knockabout. That's where I come from. And you're right. Five star venues don't mean 
much for me no more. They don't because if yeah, I bang around, look, it, it's really cool. It's um, you know, like it's a it's a, a really nice um, uh, what can you say? It's a it's a nice surprise sometimes. Uh, also, you know, like hotels as well. I was so lucky um, being in Portugal, uh, in Lisbon, and you know, like we were supplied five star accommodation, and mate, we had swimming pools, gymnasiums, the whole friggin' deal. And you know, it's lovely to be spoiled at times, but then when you get back to reality, and the next one, back and hell, mate, and you're pushing cockroaches off the fucking end of the bed, you know, it's um. You know, look, it's just one of them things, but that's a part of the part that I love too because I, I think at the end of the day, um, look, it's not about the money. Um, you know, look, it, m- money comes when it comes and when it's ready, but to me it, it's all about it's all about passion. The passion drives me, um, you know, and, and I, I feed off the audience. Um, I love what I do, um, and they make me feel welcome to be there. And and I and I give them back a hundred percent or a thousand percent more than than what I than, you know what I do you know, and yeah. it's paid off and it's shown you know and, and and I've gained a lot of lot of respect for that and you know like I've said people have, have told me that you know like you you you've really gained your swing that you probably haven't been sitting here for many number of years, but you know you, you're back on track and um, you're doing what people want. And, and and that's great, you know. It's like the Facebook, you know, you, you, you put up your pictures and, and whatever and you see things growing, you know. You know, oh, not, you, you can't put up a picture and everybody's going to like him every day of the week because, you know, at the end of the day, people get bored and say, oh, fucking hell, he's put another picture. But, it, yeah. it's a, but it's the ones that probably didn't see the last one that you, that you add up, you know what I mean, and you post up, yeah. so... Facebook, to, for me, has been really cool in the last, you know, four years, five years. Uh, it's helped me. It, it, it can cause a lot of damage also. Um, oh, so I was talking to somebody about technology, and, you know, look, yeah. I'm a bit of a fucking retailer on the computer, and it's, it's problems for me to work out out of bloody Dropbox fucking shit and things like that. But, I mean, that, yeah. that's not me. I mean, I'm here to write the stuff and, and, and do what I do and fill in my time doing everything else. And uh, look, I'm pretty lucky that I've got mates out there that, okay, look, he's having a bit of fucking stuff, you know, well, where do you want this stuff sent? And, and they do it for me, you know. So I'm really happy that I've got some great people around me that, that help me out as well. Ah, <laughs> uh, so some people that hate me on this show, uh, so I've got some hate mail from since we started back in March this year because um, we went from, Doing a kiss show to a metal show, and a lot of people didn't like that, especially some of my friends on my Facebook. I don't care, but I love them. I love them. But I thought, nah, David and I could do a metal show. We've got more things to cover, and we're fans. We're both fans. David's been following you guys. Oh, he's from Melbourne as well, and he's been following you guys more than I have. I'm only 35. He's, he's in his 40s, so he's got yeah. seven years on top of it. But that doesn't matter. I just want to ask, um, would you ever consider doing Soundwave or have you been approached before to do Soundwave? Look, I'll I tell you what, that, that's a, a really, really cool question because um, a, a lot of people think that Hobbs is a, a local act. Um, look, I don't hold a, an Australian passport. I've always been uh, European. I'm English. I've got a British passport. Uh, my album was recorded overseas. Um, you know, like, just because I'm a resident, I'm, and I'm only a resident of Australia, I love yeah. Australia. It's been really fruitful to me. It's gave me some great opportunities. And, uh, but now the rest of the world is as well, too. I mean, um, you know, like, at the end of the day, am I, I ask you, actually, I ask you the question. Okay. So, just, my album was recorded overseas. I've got... I'm not an Australian. Um, I, I spend my time travelling around the place and whatever. Uh, like I said, I'm only a resident here. I'm probably here only probably half the year now, or a third of the year. Am I an international act or am I Australian? Realistically, you're international. You're just like ACDC. 
well, there you go. I mean, as far as I was, as far as what I heard, until last year, there was no um, local acts that were on the, to be on Soundwave. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, um, maybe AJ don't like me. I don't know. Who knows? But um, yeah, but I'm really happy that you brought that up because you know what, there was no. Um, uh, Australian band sort of really got a look in at that and, until last year. Yeah. So, uh, or, the, or the start of this year, actually. So, yeah, yeah. last year as well, yeah. You know, so... Another, um, ba- uh, another band that should be on Soundwave is Forearm, and they haven't even been looked at on Soundwave. They've been overseas playing with... Um, fly, uh, I believe they went over there last year to play with Flyer. Yeah, as far as I know, I heard something like that, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, you know, like, I, I, I sort of like, is it, is it a, is it a pay to play festival? I don't know, is it? I'm asking, I'm asking around. Do you, do you actually pay to play there? Because I won't. You know, I think that I've earned, um, over the years, I've been at this for 30, 30 plus years now, actually more. And, um, you know, is it a festival you actually pay to play? I ask myself. Yeah, that's a good question because I'm I never used to be a, a festival fan. David mm. David is my co-host is, but I never used to be a festival fan. I wanted to see the band headlining a show with their support act, like the old mm. days. But when I saw the festival's taken off in the 90s. I mean, Big Day Out was huge in the 90s. Now it's crap. But yeah. I think Soundwave has taken over the sound. But I wanted a festival like the Monster Ball Festival or Ozfest or something like that, even Barkin. Someone like Barkin that comes down to Australia. Just a yeah. massive big metal festival. Because we've never really had a massive metal festival in Australia except for Soundwave or Big Day Out. And the same way, the same way is pretty close to that now already. Um, yeah. It's, you know, like, look, AJ does a great job. He, he really does. He works hard at what he does, and, and they're very successful. And, you know, like, I, I take my hat off to successful people. Um, yeah. I don't bag them or whatever. I, I think if, if somebody does a great job, give them credit for it. Um, so, you know, like, I, I think he's doing okay. Look, at the end of the day, if I never play on Soundwave, Look, it just wasn't meant to be. But at the end of the day, I play on uh, so many other great things, and I get invited to some great things. So I'm, I'm pretty grateful for what it is. So, look, at the end of the day, a good on him. If I get there, fantastic. If I don't, I ain't going to cry. No. I, I, I'm like this. I'm, I'm a bit more open-minded, but I do say this, that Australian bands, where it's mm. metal, rock, whatever... They should get more recognition in their home turf as well as overseas. I mean, you guys just came back from America, but back here in Australia, I do believe that there's got to be some more recognition, whether it's from AJ to put you on Soundwave or not. I still believe there's got to be a little bit more recognition down here in Australia that most of these younger bands and a few older bands not getting really much of that. They're getting it overseas more rather than the home turf. Oh, definitely. You know, definitely. Um, you know, and going back, going back again to the talent of Australian units, fuck, you know, they, 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 there has to be a way to, um, to, show, to show more of it, you know, because there's some great stuff out there. Oh, of course. Of course. A question I want to ask about the new album, is that going to be produced by the same producer that did last time, or it's going to be a whole new team? No, actually, Holly, I started to, you know, like this album has been a long, a long, long time in the process. Uh, Obstos has a lot of lineup changes, and that's, um, uh, look, it's due to people, people calling out on the road that it doesn't suit them, and, um, you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea touring. It's very hard work, you know. And I've just gone through a lot of line-up changes due to this. And, uh, you know, look, I, I don't have... I don't have a lot of years to waste and fuck around. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So I, I've got to I've got to provide to the um, the, the people uh, and whatever. Time time is not standing still. It's moving, you know. So um, you know, due to a lot of lineup changes, the the album was recorded a couple of times over. And I just fucking canned it, you know, until I come across the right the right people that I, I, I felt that um, fucking deserve, you know. Yeah. So that, that's what I've done. And like I said, I, I recorded in Italy with um, uh, two Italians and a Swede. Uh, the studio that I did it at was, is, is great. Fucking, they've done an awesome job. We're at the process now. It's just uh, final mixing. And uh, then it'll be mastered. And, uh, you know, doing the uh, cover, as I said, this weekend, I kick off on doing that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, so, um, you know, like I, going back to uh, Harris Johns, I did go over with Harris and, and work there again. Um, and, I, I, look, I, I think probably my best explanation of this is the songs that I did was a, a good demonstration of what I've got now. So it gave me an idea, and it was all well worthwhile to go into the studio, record the songs as a demo purpose. It, it's given me great opportunity over the last year to sit down, listen to it, make changes, uh, change what I did like, change what I didn't like. Um, you know, so... And my plan of attack is... Previously, Hobbs did demos, sat on them and found out, you know, and before when he recorded the final product, and a few and quite a number of years later, I, I released the demos, you know. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, I, I think that my uh, my chemistry is, is what I've done over the, this, uh, this years is to... Um, Redo it again, you know. So yep. the album that was done with um, the guys here, Skids, uh, Luke and Bo, they're not going to be destroyed. Um, we did a great job there. And um, look, they'll come out in later years to come as a really, really cool demo. So And something for everybody to be proud of as well. Yeah. You know, the sound of like, the sound... Yeah. Sorry. I just want to say, if you have a bucket list from now to the end of your career, who would be the bucket list to play with? I mean, there's so many great bands out there, but if you want to top it off the bucket list with the band, who would you want to play with or share the stage with? Uh, Exodus, for sure. Yep. Um, I'd, I'd like to play with Slayer again, and that's very possible. Um. You know, like I, I, you know, like I, I'm still a kid as well. I, I'm still a kid inside, and I'd like to play with all the greats. I'd like to be on the big four. Um, you know, I, I've got to keep working hard, and if the opportunity arises, well, I'm going to jump on it. Um, you know, like there's there's some in the past three years, this festival I've been playing. Um, you know, I, I just I just don't have enough to say about the bands. That they'll play with at the festivals, that they're pro, and when you get to these uh, festivals, it's fucking war. This, this is not, you know, like there's no headliners at festivals. It doesn't matter no. whether Satellicon is going on last. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, it, there is no. The festival is war, and everybody gets up there and does their ultimate best, and and tries to prove their best. And you know, at the end of the at the end of the fest, people remember the bands that are, are really um, remembered, and the ones that are forgotten are, are forgotten. You know, but that that to me it's war, and I like going into the arena for war. So that's my, you know, my passion is there to please, please my audience. I don't play pissed, uh, you know, whatever. I, I learnt many many years ago that. That's one thing that is the greatest I'm doing, and was for me personally. Um, you know, I've, I've been done it all. I've done drugs, man. I've done everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the the one thing that I did learn very early in my career 
is that people are coming to see a show and give them the ultimate of what they're paying to see. And with that, uh, I've gained respect and, you know, uh, and, and I'm grateful and, and a lot of gratitude to the people that do come and see me, you know. Exactly. I know that you probably will have a Final Tap story or just one of those outrageous stories, but what is your Final Tap story? Been on the road. I haven't got it because I haven't finished being on the road yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, 2015 is going to be absolutely humongous. You know, like America was 29 dates. We we had 30, but one of them I had to cancel. And um, all the places that missed out are going to get the Sea Hogs in 2015. There will be no stone unturned. So everywhere I play it out of that, 29, they all want me back. And there's another 35, 40 places that want odds as well. So, yeah. you know, so 60, 60 dates to 70 dates is not out of the question. And that's the aim, you know. Yeah. So I think ask me again after that, and I reckon I'll have a shitload to tell you. Will you go up to Canada on the next American tour? Or are you just doing America? Yep. Uh, Canada at this stage is the starting point. So I want to do east, west and everything in the middle. And then, um, you know, like I'm pretty wise now about how it can change and it gets really cold fast. So if kickoff in Canada, I'm thinking September. Uh, the word is September next year, kickoff from Canada, both sides in the middle, drop down in the Buffalo. And then ride the barrel down Niagara Falls and fucking hit the rest and keep going, you know? There's another festival I do know in Canada called the Montreal Rock Festival, the metal festival up there. You guys could play on that. Or even um, even, rock on, even Rock on the Range. They've got a lot of metal bands on the Rock on the Range as well. Yeah. Look, I'm getting hit by festivals worldwide now. And... Yep. Um, you know, it, it, it's very exciting, and, and I'm very uh, grateful. You know, um, I, I, I'm trying to fit in where where I can go. Um, is there any places uh, that you can't go? <laughs> sorry. Are there any Are there any places that you can't go? Um, look, the sky's the limit, and um, there's nothing holding me back. I'm hungry as hell. And uh, I, I want to get to play everywhere I can. South America is um, screaming for Hobbs at the moment. Um, you know, I've only got one pair of hands. And um, if I had three pair of hands, well, I'd be in three places at once. But it's uh, got to be realistic. And, um, you know, and, and it's got to be feasible. And to get to the places where I want to go, and at the end of the day, too, it's first in, best dressed. You know, so... It, when it becomes viable and, and to be able to do things, I've, I've got to follow. I have to follow my instincts and, and go to where I have to go, you know. But um, you, you are right. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of festivals, and I am being coached for a lot at the moment. Go back a bit on AJ. Um, we have some bands on our show want to do Soundwave, and I approached AJ on Twitter, and the first response I always get from AJ is the band hasn't approached him. And I don't know who should approach who when it comes to these type of festivals. Should the band approach the promoter or the promoter should approach the band? Nine times um, out of ten, yes. Yeah. Look, I've, I've approached uh, promoters and some of the promoters are so fucking arrogant that they can't even respond. And... Um, you know, so look, I don't pull punches, and I'm telling the truth. I've uh, put in requests many, many a times, and I get a, um, a generic, uh, a generic sort of answer coming back yeah. that uh, look, your email has been forwarded on to the buyer, and if the buyer is interested in your act, you'll be contacted. Well, man, I know for a fucking fact that nobody even saw that. Yeah. And, um, you know, but at the end of the day, when you get out there and you, you prove to the world that you work hard and when they do approach you, you don't refuse. You say, yes, okay. I'll be there. 
or we'll be there. When is it? I'm coming. And I've got... And I think David and I should take a little bit of credit for our show when we do go to AJ or some other promoter and say, hey, this band wants to play. Now, we're not promoters. All we are is just two, two metalheads that do a show. But mm. we go to some of these promoters and say, hey, this band wants to come. Lo and mm. behold, in 24 hours, we get a response back saying that promoter just got in contact with that band. And it happened with yeah. the Soundwave just recently. Now... We take credit when credit's due, but we're not trying to smoke, smoke, smoke up anybody of our fans' artists because we do work hard the same as the band does. We, sometimes I don't go to bed till 5 o'clock in the morning because I'm working so much on the show, trying to put mm. so much energy and resources and God knows who else I'm talking to into the show to make it the quality show for next week or the week after. But mm. we do speak by saying that, yeah, I've, I've been getting generic emails back, and I, sometimes I reckon no one has actually seen it. It's just a press of a button, generic automatic response back. If emails being received, we'll get someone to get, get back to you in 24 hours. And sometimes mm. you wait six, six months before an email comes back, or even at all. And I'm, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and I think look, a lot of people, a lot of people now rely on the Facebook. They, a promoter will have a look how many likes your band page has got. And, um, you know, I mean, look, I have, I have very, very, I have much, much less than some bands out there. And, but, it, look, that's fucking bullshit. It, because there's 30,000 or 40,000 that like your band, it doesn't mean you're going to get on the thing of the great fest in the world. You know, it, 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 take, it takes a lot more than that. But there are there are uh, promoters and agencies out there now that are running on how many hits you've got, how many likes you have on your band page on Facebook. So fucking good luck to them, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm underground and I'm a very uh, well respected underground band throughout the world. Yep. And um, you know, it just uh, and being at the festivals and uh, and the audiences that are there to see Hobbs on that time of the day, well, proof is in the pudding, you know, so, but at the end of the day, it's all up, and, look, I say it, every show I play, if it wasn't for the fans, I wouldn't be there myself, so, you know, you've got to thank them, they come, throughout my career, my fans always come first, and I put myself second, because without them, I wouldn't be there myself. Uh, and that's how I've always been. So, you know, so it's, um, yeah, I, I, look, I, I really don't know about um, going back to the Soundwave thing. Like I said, he's got a festival that's working very, very well for him. Um, he has some great acts there. And, um, you know, well, good luck to me. Like I said, if there's an opportunity to be playing there one day, I'll be there. Hey, Jake, give me a bell. Let's talk. Let's go, you know? Yeah. Just one but, question I want to ask. Yep, go on. Before I ask the question, just continue on. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll just, um, just ask. You mentioned before about fans' hits and likes on Facebook or social media. I want to ask, as a fan for you, self, not a member of Hobbs, Angel, or Seth, I want to ask as a mm. fan of music. If a... Fans got like, say, 200,000 or 2 million likes on their Facebook page. And when an album comes out, the numbers on the Facebook page or social media, where it's Twitter, or whatever, is higher than actual album sales. What do you think is the, the problem? Because a lot of bands rely on their social media status rather than the actual product that they bring out. And when well, the listen. numbers don't when the numbers don't add up to the album sales, what what do you think the problem lies? Look, it's a, it look it's the same as um doing a, an advertisement run, going around to letter boxes and throwing in flyers of a handyman. You can throw out for argument say ten thousand letter boxes and one ten percent 
out of the 10,000 or 1% of the 10,000 will maybe give you a phone call. So sales can run like this as well. Um, you, you know, like you, as we were going back before as well, is you can have so many people liking your jokes, like liking your pictures, uh, liking a lot of things you do, but is it really worth going out and spending 30 bucks or 25 bucks for the CD? It, it, it's, it's all, it all, it's on the individual. But um, you know, the the bands that have the a lot of likes and whatever, also at the same time, are, are pretty hard working as well. Okay. You know, you, you know, there 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 is hard working bands out there that are getting this likes and popularity due to their hard work. You know, um, another band, King Parrot from Australia here. Uh, I love them. I love them. You know, like um, we just missed out on playing in uh, Texas together, and uh, quite a few places. You know, they, like they were playing two two days later or two days earlier, and um, you know what like they're doing extremely well as well. But those guys are fucking working hard, man. You know what like they return? Yep. They do a they do a coast uh, Australia coast, and they're they're back in the states again. I mean, that's yeah, that's what you call it. Yeah, so you know, like I spoke, yeah. I spoke to Matty Young this morning and uh, they're touring with Down and everything. And, um, you know, like things are going well for them and, and good on them because they're, they're working really fucking hard. Oh, cool. And you they know, can like, sign up for American Label too, I believe. I uh, can't really comment on that because I don't really know too much about it, you know. Yeah, yeah I've heard um, they can sign up a new, a new record label. But it's doing well for them. It's doing well. Um, yeah, look, rumours it could be house call. I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, but, I'm um, not yeah, sure too. Yeah, I, you know, like I, I don't want to uh, comment because I, I don't want to be wrong. You know. No, I don't want to be wrong too. I just know that they just signed up for another record label, and that. Awesome. But King Parrot, King Parrot. Uh, I spoke to Matt Young early in this year on our show, and they have. They just skyrocket. They've got a rocket pack on their back and then they're off. Yeah, you know. They're, they're nothing stopping them. And you know, I but, mean, that, but I mean, yeah. that's, that's hard working. That's not that's not a band sitting around in their bedroom fucking dreaming. Exactly. No, that's a unit out That's a unit out there going for it and, and trying hard like myself. You know, I don't dream about what I'm doing. I go and do it. And, um, it, you know, and that's what makes all the sense. And, and some people, like, turn around and go, fucking hell, how, how do these guys do this? You know, like, what are they, fucking one tax lot or something? No, it's, it's fucking do what you've got to do, put your money aside, and get out there and do it. You know, it doesn't come on a silver plate. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you get a promoter that will pay for you to get over and do what you've got to do. But... Um, you know, and sometimes it doesn't. So you got to be prepared to, like I said, going into that casino and, and spending your buck to win a buck. You know. Yep. And that, and I know what it's like for our show when we put the hard work in, week in week out, probably night in night out, just to make it right. It, mm. The dividends pays off. The dividends do pay off. If no matter what type of job you have, as long as you put the hard yards in, the reward just comes back tenfold. Yeah. You know? I mean, so speaking, like a, speaking of which, I've got to start doing some of that shortly. Yeah. Well, we got to we got to wrap it up. We've been on the on here for an hour and a half, but Peter, it's been an absolute pleasure. We want to get you back on the show after all the festival season, Christmas, New Year, and all that mm. slide down. We want to get you back on. Give us another ear bashing of all the stories of overseas as well, and also the new album should be around in time too. We want to talk more about it as well. All right, look, it's it's been my total pleasure, and um, you know, like I keep saying, if it's not people like yourself that um, give me give me your time, um, you know, I like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. So my greatest gratitude goes out to 
radio stations like yourself, promoters, and, and everybody in the industry that's um, been supporting Hobbs over the last three, four years. And, um, you know, like without you guys, I wouldn't be doing what I love doing. So I thank you guys so much. So it's our pleasure, and we can only give back what we love as well because we're fans and we want to wave the flags if we could. Just to, I mean, it's Molly Meldrum was a fan when he started Countdown. Well, that's what we are. Well, I mean, we're not as big as Molly Meldrum. I, I wish we yeah. could be, but we can't. <laughs> but no, we're yeah. just fans. We're just fans, and we just want to give back to what the people are missing out on. There's a lot of great music out there that needs to be heard, and we just want the fans, as much as ourselves, to hear the stuff and talk to the fans and just get into the the whole type of things, how to get started and all that. That's part of our job. But, Pete, we'll take, we'll take the pleasure of having you on. Thank you so much, and I know... You've got a lot, a lot of work going on. You've got the album cover, like you mentioned before. You've got other tours coming up, and it just never stops. And we're going to be there 100% supporting you, like we do with all the other bands on our show. Thank you very, very much. Much appreciated. It really is. No worries, man. And take care. And Merry Christmas, too, to you and your family. Thank you, and likewise. And um, we'll, we'll chat again. We'll chat again in the. Uh, in the new year before I take off, I'll, I'll swing past the studio and we'll talk a little bit more and, and we'll soldier on and I'll, um, I'll, I'll raise that flag and just keep keep stormtrooping, man. <laughs> <laughs> we will. All right, but it's great talking to you and we'll, we'll have to wrap up because it's getting a bit... I'm running out of credit at the moment. No, it's not credit, it's just it's Skype. <laughs> anyway, uh, we yeah. better wrap it up, but... We've got, to, we've got to wrap it up so I can put some songs in for you guys. What? One question before you go. What song would you like us to play? Um, look, I, I think um, I think a, a song that uh, a lot of people have, have liked over the years and what uh, Rob's has become throughout the world, uh, a sister, sisterhood and a brotherhood, and um, it's one of the favourite songs of uh, Faust in Norway, so I'll dedicate uh, dedicate that over to him as well if I can. From uh, Faust from Emperor and Blood Tsunami, and like again, thanks very much. And um, the Hobbs is the brotherhood. You will. Thank you, Pete, for joining us. And been up Cheers. to an awesome chat. Okay, catch you later, mate. Right. 
Well, what can I say? Cannot say thank you enough to Peter Hop and also the band for allowing us to talk to Peter Hobbs. And his schedule is just flat out. He's working 24-7, fleet on the trot, and, you know, he's just an outstanding ambassador for Australia, music, metal scene. Metal, and also... Yeah. Always has been for yeah. the last god... Well over 30 years, um, oh, of course. even pre-Hobbs Angel, uh, as I said before, Tyrus and all that, all the all the projects, musical projects he's been involved in, you know, it's, he's, he's, but he's a credit and icon of Australian heavy metal, oh, no doubt, uh, yeah, fucking Peter, you're a legend, mate. Yep, and... Cannot wait when it happens. I know that he's coming to... I said this. I want to see you back in Adelaide. Said, we are coming to Adelaide. Like, oh, man. Where, yeah. where are they going to play in Adelaide? I do not know. I hope it's a, a good venue. Yeah. Well, there is good venues, but I just hope that when it comes, man, if I don't have longer hair than it's on now, because I am growing it out, um, only because someone said I look better and the other person said that it might save me neck a little bit easier for head banging. I don't know. But <laughs> um, well, because I reckon if you have longer hair, you don't have a sore neck as much. Okay. Yeah, it's also how you do it too. Oh, man. Last night, yeah. I, don't, I, I was talking to um, Craig Cicero, who was in Forbidden about it a few months ago. And basically, he rec- reckons the way that Tom Araya used to, used to do the figure of eight, uh, basically screwed his neck up. Yeah. If you, if you do it as like a certain way, like a circular type motion, like um, corpse, George Corpse kind of Fisher does it in Cannibal Corpse, yeah, it, he's never he and he because Craig did it that way, he's never had a problem with his neck. Yeah. I don't have a problem with my neck. I just look like a yeah. sumo wrestler the next day. I just, eh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. um, uh. a question, Dave. Um, yeah. We come in. Shay, our me. producer of our show, lovely lady she is. Um, 
asked me in my ear last night because I thought the dying by Daryl Tribute um, for his anniversary yeah. of his death. He said, "Next time, sure." My partner said, "Next time when you get a guitarist with long hair, ask him a question: Have they ever got the hair caught in the strings of the guitar?" <laughs> okay. I want to no, ask you, David, as a fan, no, have, have you ever problem. seen someone's hair get caught in the guitar? Not that I can remember. <laughs> yeah. mm. No, I've never really thought about that. Never really taken notice of that, to be honest. But nah, just a short answer. Well, I've never seen it yet. Uh, I'm pretty sure somebody has, but it would be funny for that. If they got it caught in, they couldn't get it out. That's the reason why she asked me that question because the, she's been going to a lot of gigs with me this year and. Most of the guitar players have long hair. They twirl their hair around and do the head bang and all that stuff. And she tapped me on the shoulder, pulled me aside after the, I think it was the first or second band. There was a bit of a break. The, the third band, okay. It was the third band. Anyway, um, that's from the producer, mind you. Anyway, um, she said, next time when you get a person, because she's been looking at the band, how they perform and that. And she, she just said, Next time you get a guitarist with long hair, ask him if there ever been a time in their career on stage where their hair get caught in the strings. Mm. And would be funny if they couldn't get out. Duh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. I don't know. But, Can you just no, make... I've, I've never seen it happen, so... Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised it has happened. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But I haven't seen it yet. Um... Might be a first, but I have seen um, incidents where I remember got um, injured. He injured himself, basically. I have seen that. Uh, yeah. you know, we know who we're talking about. And, um, yeah. You know, I have seen some weird and, win- weird and funny things at gigs over the years. And, that, and let's throw it out there, Dave. We'll go from that question to this one, then we'll wrap it up. Mm-hmm. What is the most funniest thing, where it's embarrassing or just hilarious thing, whether it's from the fan? Well, here's a two-part question. Funniest thing or embarrassing thing or a moment of shock thing that you have ever witnessed in a live performance where from a fan or God. a band member? Oh, God. Yeah, you put me on the spot here. Ah, um, this is my job. Yeah, I know. Well, it's kind of, you have to give me time to think about that one. Um, so I've got to think think back. It's, I haven't seen really anything that I can remember at the moment that's been really embarrassing to a, a band member. Of, you know, actually, yeah, I suppose this would be embarrassing. Uh, I went to the old place that's been shut down for years called the Old Greek Theatre here in Melbourne. It was, I was in Richmond, and um, there wasn't much the crowd. There wasn't much of a crowd this night, and uh, it was, I think I had a hard on show, and they had like the speaker stacks on the on the side of the stage, large speaker stacks, and this guy decided he was going to get up on top of the said speaker stacks, which are on top of the stage as well, and they were, they were large stacks, and dive off of it. And as I said, there wasn't much of a crowd there, and it was a wooden floor. <laughs> <laughs> so he decides to dive off the thing, just <clears throat> face planted on the on the on the um floor. Yeah, I can't remember him getting up too fast from memory. This is like twenty, um, nearly twenty five years ago. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah, pretty embarrassing, I suppose, yeah. especially when you face plant. Actually, if I actually had come to think of it, I've done that. <laughs> I actually went to a Mortal Sin gig about uh, 96, 97. There were two rows, there were, again, wasn't that many people there because there was other gigs on that night. I remember, I think Blood Duster were playing that night as well. And there was only two rows of people at the front. Just get, 
just get I'll go up on the stage in front of Matt Moore and just stay his life off the front and sail that and sail it over the top of the two rows and we'll <laughs> right on my nose. We were basically on my forehead, nose area. And I had like a big mark across my the top of my nose from where I face planted. Yeah. Lucky I didn't break my neck. I think the funniest thing I've ever seen, and you were at this gig with me, Dave, it was the Exodus yeah. concert in 2010. Oh, the, the, you're going to talk about that guy with the yeah. when they, the wall of death? Yeah, that and he had his, funniest. His it wasn't embarrassing, beard. it was the most funniest thing i ever seen. Yeah. If you've never been to the corner hotel, especially the ones that out of Melbourne, <laughs> and uh, there are two brick pylons in the yeah, right in front, right in front of the stage. stage. Yeah. And Rob Duke was <laughs> doing his thing at the time, asked for a, a pit, a circle pit, to play Toxic Waltz at one stage. And he said, instead of going on one pylon, I want you to go around both of those pylons, the big circle pit. I want you to go around both of them. Would that happen? But the funniest one was the wall of death. He split the crowd up. David and I turned back, looked at the crowd. I said to David, you're going to go in? He said, no, 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 no. I said, right. well, I'm not going in either. Because there were two females in front of him, uh, in front yeah. of us. And we had to be like the shield type of thing. Well, anyway, um, the funniest thing was there was a guy standing up against, a, leaning up, drunk, mind you, mm. up against a pylon with a glass of bourbon in his hand. Yeah. Rob Jukes turned around and said, Hold! On my command, I want you to run at each other. But, I get that. I want to see this guy here, get him first. Well, <laughs> first string, hit, boom, they run at each other. The guy get completely K.O. Smashed. Up against <laughs> a brick wall. And, man, that was it. <laughs> it was <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Um, sorry for the I mean, uh, probably not hilarious for him. But, oh, no. Yeah. But it was <laughs> hilarious to watch. That's Rob Jick said on our um, interview about that. He said, you know, we don't. Condone violence. We don't want to see. Uh, we're, we're, we're really getting hurt, but yeah. But it is funny to see. Yeah. It is fun to see yeah. the wall of death. But yeah. um, yeah, that was a funny. <laughs> the most embarrassing one. Um, oh, I've seen a lot, but the one that come to my mind I, on the spot, like I asked you the question on the spot, mm. was that the Tankard concert this year, mm. where the guy basically. Ran past three security guards at the front of the stage, got on the stage, mm-hmm. done a stage dive, but his legs slipped on the freaking guardrail at the front of the stage, and he had planted the wooden floor because the crowd just split. Oh. He didn't actually go over the crowd. He hit the freaking guardrail and up in the pit in the front of the stage. Yeah, hey, I've seen that happen a couple of times. There, yeah, one girl, one girl was. Badly, and this is a British steel gig where um, uh, actually, uh, I think they just played Turbo Lover, and me and a friend of mine were standing next to each other. I just got was filming, done filming Turbo Lover on my phone, and I had my phone in one hand, a beer in the other, and this guy, a friend, got up and and st- as well on the stage like hey, she, or. No, actually, she, the, her friend did the stage dive, but this girl got up and decided she was going to all of a sudden stage dive right out towards our way. Mate and I, and you know this mate as well, our friend Mick, yep. we've gone, so we've gone, oh, shit, here she goes, we went, <laughs> split, and she went right between us, and just went, bang, <laughs> full body plant on the ground, and she didn't move for about half an hour. <laughs> they had to stop the show. They were nearly going to um, can't stop the cancel the rest of the show until um, after about half an hour. They I think they came back and played maybe a couple of songs, and that was it. But um, yeah, it's it's not in a way. Yeah, it's embarrassing, but it's also it, it's 
Yeah, you don't want to see people getting hurt like that. And sometimes you've got to think, is it really worth stage diving off the, the off the stage anyway? Especially when there's not that many people up front enough yeah. to sort of for you to. And you've got not, especially when you don't give them that much warning. Mm. <laughs> well, so I, for me, it is embarrassing for the person that gets hurt. But mm. for me, it's hilarious because I'm. I'm saying it, and sometimes I just shake my head. It's like you idiot. You knew what the consequence was going to happen, mm. but um, you're there to have a oh, they, yeah. They ha- they're there yeah. to have a good time. They might have one too many drinks and so forth, so forth. Next minute, you yeah. see someone get hurt. I mean, I've seen it heaps of times, mm. but with me, I don't. It's embarrassing for the person and their friends who they mm. come along with, but with mm. me. Yeah. Just to witness it. I laugh at anything, whether they hurt themselves or they don't. I laugh at anything. It's like, check this out, would you? But um, yeah. there have been um, a few stories, and I can't come to the top of my head, but I will come along one day and just go bang, 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 bang. But, yeah, um, so yeah, I thought we should just talk about that and um, only because Shay asked me a question last night. was, oh, hey, let's put some embarrassing or you know, shocking moments that you've seen. Mm. We'll probably do an episode of that later mm. down the track. But anyway, that was Peter Hobbs. Um, to wrap it up, we're going to be doing mini episodes, as I said at the top of the show, where you solely focus on that band with that interview. But to listen to the full uncut episode, please go to our you, Podomatic and I tunes and tuning thing next year in the new year we may have to extend it for a double episode or do two episodes record two episodes and then we do the editing and fine tuning and put two episodes a week in it all depends on how bigger we get i mean we're big now but just imagine how bigger we get next year but um We've got two weeks to go for this year. We're having a bit of a break for Christmas and New Year and coming back in the New Year because, as you know, we've got a, a more, more killer albums and tunes and concerts coming out next year that both Dave and I will be going to and also there'll be more new guests on our show and I can't wait what next year's coming out. You think this year was big, which it was, Especially for Dave and I, because we had no expectation. Oh, we had expectations, but we had no idea how well it took off quickly compared mm. to our other one. But, um, I mean, we had so many big artists, name artists, band on our show. Next year, I can see the platform just going to rise even further. I mean, I know there's one band that the producer would like to get us on our show when night was, and I know that mm. could possibly happen because of what we. And why I'd love to get personally myself. I'd love to get Dave Mustaine on the show. Um, well, if I can talk to Junior beforehand at the meeting group, well, or even yeah, or depends on how much time. Junior's got here, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to get an interview with Junior yeah. as well. Uh, even my, uh, and being that Mustaine's probably one of my heroes, uh, uh, yeah, I'd love to interview Mustaine as well. But anyway, we've got a lot of things. We can't really talk much what's going to happen next year mm. because we haven't got it. Yeah, yeah. But um, there are go. I do believe there's going to be a few surprises. I have been told by a certain person. I'm not going to mention any name. To keep my mouth shut. Don't ask questions. Don't do it. To keep my mouth shut. I believe it's a big surprise coming around. And don't ask me what it is. There's some people who were there at the night that heard it being said. I don't know. And what it is because. I didn't speculate any further, and I've been told not to. So don't come and ask me who it is, because I don't know. I've been told to keep my yeah. mouth shut. But um, anyway, 
this episode was an awesome episode. Once again, thanks to Peter Hobbs and Hobbs Angel of Death for joining us, and we cannot wait. On the next episode, we're just going to have fun like we always do. There will be some new tunes coming on next episode on our Podomatic and iTunes and tune in. So stick around for that. And also, there could be some new guests on our show. Just wait and see. Because I love giving the, the, the magic of keeping us surprised for next week. I don't yeah. know who we got yet. Or I may do know who we got yet. No, I really don't know who we got yet. Anything can change. It's only <laughs> Sunday, yeah? Yeah. You know, it's like a metal church. We're on our, mm. on our camcorders and recording this in our studios of our own home just talking about what we love. So, really, I don't know. It's only Sunday. So, it could happen tomorrow. It could happen Tuesday. It could happen midnight tonight. Who knows? But anyway. Mm. Go to our Spotify page, subscribe, like us. Go to our Facebook page. Go to our TuneIn, iTunes. Like I said before on our uncut version, if you listen to it, we don't want your money because everything is free. All we want is your love, you know? Mm. So give us a cuddle, give us a beer, give us whatever you want when you see us at a gig because... The candy, and let's make that clear, only colours from the chicks. Oh, yeah, well, bro hugs, uh, like, bro hugs yeah. like um Zach Wild does. If you want to give us a uh, bro hug like Zach uh, Wild does, yeah, do it. You know? Don't give any wet willies because we'll hit you across the back of the head. No, okay. Nah. But, um, yeah. you know, and, you know, we love you guys for all the support you've been doing. And we've got a couple episodes left and then we're on a break for... About a week or two, and then we're back into it. So, yeah. All right. Dave, it's been awesome. We had uh, this one. And you, oh, I'll keep uh, him up. I'm keeping him up now. Shit. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> don't worry about the time. I'm, I'm upping it up. I'm upping it up. Mm, no, you know you are. <laughs> anyway, join us next week as we will bring you more from Blood, Sweat, and Metal. Good night, everyone. And take care. Dave, you take care. Have a great week. Mm-hmm. Well, day. And, uh, and we'll... Get back next week. Hopefully, be- hopefully better week than last. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, now that I'm healthier now, I'm, I'm been doing all right. So, <coughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I will be writing up a um, reviews now. I've got my new computer. I spoke to some of the bands last night that gave us some CDs <laughs> in the past. And I've, I've got all sitting 